Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela E, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. In studio today, we got the legendary rapper from Best Style, Brooklyn, Mr. Sean Carter himself, Jay Z. Yeah. <laughs> You remember how last time we started with the pop band, right? Today yeah. we're going like five steps ahead. In fact, a hundred steps ahead. We've got a celebrity guest, our first ever guest on the H and L podcast. Ah, uh, we oui, we oui. we've got none other than Santa Zakusa. Yay. Good morning. Good morning. Is it really the morning? <laughs> it's always morning, <laughs> right? Always. Mama Draco. Uh-huh. What is this travel thing about? Um. It's an alter ego. If I'm not being Zander Zaguza trying to save the world, I'm being Dragon trying to make everybody party. Mm. <laughs> yes. Manja Wusho, who born there, you know, Kosa Rihanna is a Navy, Beyonce is a Bay Hive. What are the Zaguza stands called? Um, they're called Dragons, and oh, okay. they're all from Dragonville. Come on now. Ah, that's <laughs> <laughs> they must love to party. Yes, they must love to party. They must love to party. They keep on bleeding. <laughs> Isn't that what I do in the booth, though? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, so tell us more about yourself, about Zander Zaguz, or what people are cool enough, and what is she about? Uh, tomboy from Umlazi, born and raised. Kabang. Oh. Surprise, surprise. People <laughs> always think I'm from the Eastern Cape. My family's from the Eastern Cape. So, by default, I'm from there as well. But mm. I was actually born in Mlazi, raised. Gachi. Uh, Zin, mm. G1. Um, yeah, man. I even attended, like, you know, Durban South School, Seavery Primary, Bretton Wood High. Uh, yeah, yeah so the classics. Mm. And then there was Pantan Girls. Yeah, and then was. towards the end, Pantan Girls, yes. Mm. That's where I found. Did you also catch uh, Pearl Tusi? Uh, no. Or the year I came school? in, she was already out. Oh, okay. I think she had left that the year before. Oh, the year before. Yeah. So she's not that older. She's mm. just like a, a year. No. I don't know. Done, done, done. Well, I'm done. 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 You mentioned something about people mistaking you from being from, uh, from the Eastern Cape. Yeah. Why, why is that? Uh, because my entire family is from there. Everyone oh, in my right. family, including my cousins, they were all born in Pizana, in Eastern Cape. So. Yeah, because I've never heard of uh, the Zaguza, that is a Zulu. Yeah, so, shame. My mom on the bank. Oh. Yeah, because I'm. I won't lie. I mean, uh, I, I don't know what you're from Durban. Because some from UK, they will talk. Hey, we have artists in Durban. Go on your TC. And then some friends, and I'm like, ish. Okay, but I'm, I'm not sure. sure. It's not make sure. Exactly. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, but now I'm getting to get up. You clarified. We'll talk. It from Durban. Mm. Now, important question for me. Mm. Uh, did you know what's okay? Like you wanted to sing, like with Kali Ranja, and most importantly, I mean, I want to know what's okay. Who put you on? Cause you know why? Mm. I just feel like you're in the city. About about the band of more now, about Fumu Farane in twenty. Zara, let's go back to like 2014, 15. Yeah. Let's prove our song, okay, guys. Who mm. Nandi? The next thing was under how on TV yeah. singing. So I mean, I want to know yeah. what's okay. Like, did you always wanted to say? Did you, did you always wanted to get into music? And I want to know what's going to be like. Who put you on? Who let you know come if you can, so we can actually send a shout out to a person. Cause I know we learned the clinics. Um, the whole music thing actually started very late for me. I didn't start at the age of four or whatever. Mm. I think it was about 18, 17 when I started singing A Pantan Girls. So the whole singing thing, you know, I was doing it as, you know, extra mural, trying to get extra credits and mm. honors because it was a thing back then. Um, and then it kind of carried on. Like, it turns out I was good, so I just stuck to it. Um, but it wasn't until I had to choose what to do in university, and I thought, hey, the music thing is kind of nice. So um, first year, I knew that I didn't want to teach. I didn't want to have like you know a school or anything. I wanted to be in the front line. So yeah, I think it was around 2012 that I started singing, mm. yeah, professionally. And then to get into the scene was not as easy as of everybody course. thought. It's never easy. Yeah, so I, I left school thinking, I you know what, I've got the basics. I think I'm a girl single. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> <laughs> Lol. Uh, Let me tell you right now, I had to go back to school because the whole music thing was not working out. Mm. It was not working out at all. And then I think around 2015, I did a hip hop song. What? Hmm, watch. With 
Devon artist who and Makukule. Ah, he's in jail as well. Shout out to Makukule. Yeah. And the same guy. We legend and like say. Gakul, Gakul, Gakul. So up to see and they used to do like. Yeah, so those are the people I looked up to because prior to that, house did not exist that's in my true. mind. Like, house music is okay, house with Tira, and that's mm. it. Yeah. It didn't go beyond that mm. for me. Um, I was there with the hip hop kids and I was juice backing with the rest of them. Yeah, <laughs> Ish. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that never leaves this room. No, I'm <laughs> you said yourself you were a tomboy, so yeah. yes, you were comfy with it. Ooh, I'm doing it, guys. <laughs> and actually, the whole tomboy actually thing is it's crazy because now, even if you go to Udo Kuz, Google, Wikipedia, it says so. Yeah, well, it's true. I don't, mm. I don't want to lie about it. It's like I think I didn't know I was a girl until I was like in high school or something. Okay. Are you grateful for that? Because maybe it helped <laughs> yes. you shy away from boys and yes. men and all that. Yeah. Yes, I think my life would have been different because. <laughs> the boys. <laughs> the boys. Yeah. yeah, but that's a story for another day. Mm. So yeah, some boy literally all my life, mm. and then it switched up. And then okay, back to Andrew Makukule. He hits me up. He's like, I need you to sing the song. I was a good thing. Zay, or maybe you. Let's go way back. So there was a, a little group that we had. It was an um, entertainment group called Black Spade Entertainment. Mm, it was my friends. Know. My friends and I decided to go see a guys, a Ali record label. Mm. But nobody signed contracts or whatever, you know. Nice. But <laughs> we were just helping each other along. So while that was happening, um, we bought studio equipment and, you know, we started recording like random jams. And then this one time, I had shows up, a studio, which invites over and I says, he's like, yeah, show sure, more, <laughs> you know, <laughs> more. <laughs> <laughs> And he asked me to sing on the song, and a friend of mine called Usmanic Gray helped me write the lyrics. Mm. And yeah, um, I Got You came about. It actually that, was kind of kind of nice. That, that's a song where you did in the Pelo, in Popomin, waterfall. In Popomin, yeah, you should try. Hey, get this. Yeah, should try Silo Timba. Our very own Lizzie yeah. James. Yes. Silo and then on the day, I remember he dropped a camera into the water. And that was like the end. It's just like, oh, music video, so done. Lost video that day. We lost, like, wow. we had to carry on with the random I camera. The Am I lying? <laughs> <laughs> Am I lying? <laughs> we had to hey, carry on. on the job. What, how, how do you drop a whole camera? Oh, like a waterfall. It was a waterfall. The, oh, the rocks were slippery. Mm. Oh, she really got, wow, wow. Pretty music yeah, video. Really For like a good four hours I stayed in JC Jamaku in Yasna, a good so going on. And then somebody else came through with a different camera, but it was like less quality. 4K was big oh, at the time. Oh, oh. <laughs> and then yeah, Sakobe, I guess I should see video, but it wasn't the same. So it looks really dope when it starts, mm -hmm. and then it becomes a ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to go back to the, the whole Eastern Cape thing. Mm. And you mentioned it would to know you're not really Zulu. Ulimbondo, if I may put it that way. Mm. Um, I don't know if you watched our, our last episode before this one. We spoke about how less we know of our culture <laughs> as, as Azulis. And I mean, in this room, between Ndu and I, as Azulis, yeah. And then the sister, what do you mean confused? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Anywhere there. You can say, you can say, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but on a more serious note, um, we actually rated ourselves because we actually realized, um, yes, man, we are man. We, asas luto, you know, we, we think that we know, but honestly, asas luto. When, when it comes to culture, I'm a do you think that you are educated, you know about your culture? No, so, so, before you answer, You've got the one question, yeah. the one, so the, the million dollar question. Okay. Go to my uncle Kosia. Yeah, well, she, she's going to explain all okay. of that. Oh. Not quite. I don't know who the king is, but there are chiefs. Mm. And yeah. Induna. yes. Zikana. And yeah, he doesn't live too far from our house, so I know who he is. Mm. <laughs> uh, But that's about it. I, I wish I knew more, but also it didn't help that I totally migrated from a young age mm -hmm. to this. Well, not really from a young age. I used to visit. 
and Abangi actually grew up there, so they know more. Even the language, they speak it fluently. I mean, I'm Kosa lights. I try, I try and honor them somehow in my songs when I sing in Kosa, but I get a lot of help doing that. I, I, I wish I knew more about about you know Amambon because there's Amakos and then there's Amambon, the Israel Amambon do say mm. as it is. You know, they they they're really. Yeah, because I mean, I won't lie to you. For the longest time, I used to think Uti, if you say to someone Ulimbon, it's an insult. It's an insult. No, yeah, uh, never, never, never that. It's, it's who we are. We can't run away from that. It's just that people who don't understand it think it's there on grassroots level but it's like any other culture mm. you know um also it's a derivative of a big culture like i'm a closer so in closer nation there's a partner and you know yeah. are scared so sometimes people don't get to like really understand what's going on and i get why they'd be like i went on and i and shy away yeah, from yeah, yeah. even trying to learn but yeah um, I, I've got the basics down, you know, and that's why I born about teach and stuff Yo, like that. Oh, first time, first time. I've been gossiping, you know. I'm yeah. so yeah. happy yeah. you yeah. did that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm telling you. But okay. No, well, I guess now, Musafela, mm. when you polish it, uh, I guess you, mm. you can call it that. But I'm not saying I collect what I'm born to act like, and you know, we we dance a different way and we dress a different way. I had to learn that when my mom get got married. Like okay, so where's like the whole orange with yeah. the? Uh, mm. We're which not those. Do you think we're from, <laughs> babes? We're here. We're colorful. They wear like five layers in one skirt of something and something else, and they wear. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Mm. Google it. It's so there. On a hot day, it becomes. A on a hot problem. day, it's a problem, especially if you're a bride, because you have to stay covered. And this, they wear like grass on their faces. Hey, it's grass a lot. Grass on their faces, even? Yeah. With that said, Zen, have you ever been to a public space, like a mall, for instance, in your full traditional attire, for whatever reason? Let's say you were at an event, a friend's wedding, mm. or whatever it was, and you decided to make short dash and they asked you mm. to go and get it. Have you ever been to a public space, like a mall, in your full attire? No! <laughs> <laughs> I've to the green salad for the green salad yeah. and they're like, Xander, please go get it I've been, us. I've been to the mall and yes, I'm mm. I'm just like, but fine, look at and I'm shy but hey, I guess we have to educate people more about who we are, you know, so that they don't look at you like you're crazy or you're from another world. Yeah. But yeah, it was kind of awkward. I saw this video recently of a gent who was out shopping and he was in his full traditional attire mm. and Kwatiwanji, this is inappropriate. And the guy who's saying that is another black guy wearing a suit. Mm. And he's like, this is inappropriate. And the lady who was taking the video asked, is, is that more appropriate? What? So if somebody had come to you and said, Ruguti, you're not dressed right to be at the mall. <laughs> In South Africa, well, in your in your traditional attire. At the mall, Mongena, there's a set of rules. Things mm -hmm. that you're allowed and not allowed to do. None of them stay to go to a field Best answer. Thank oh, you. And abang sabang abang asawa makaon gaspa sebe pali No sleepwear. No sleepwear mm. in the shop. You mm. know what I mean? Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. This so any interfoot that we don't understand as Africans is that our African traditional attire is actually formal wear. Mm. That's why you have born in Gos, like you came so at the middle of Shangana, near the Ning Gosavan, in ten years old. The Queen, mm. yes, in Goskazi. I okay, <laughs> dead. I come Kanikazi, I sing Gilandi, you know what I mean? Um, full sorting attire, they come to Michela Hambang in Yao. Nice tiny beads over there, that's yeah. like seven. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's going in. It's formal wear. So for people to be so ill informed, hey, get that mm -hmm. It's so sad. It's really sad. Now let's fast forward to Zana Zaguza. Where did you start to Zana Zaguza? Get to UK, this is where you started. And then mm. uh, Wakula like hip hop, and then you realize, okay, now I need to change my style. That's cool. Uh, Zuzza, and that's cool. Smash it. I remember when I heard the song for the first time, I was like, you know what, this is it. Umvolo. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I was like, you know what, this voice it's is so just wild. perfect for this beat. And who is this DJ guy? Who is this lady? Mm. You know? How did that song come about, that collaboration? I mean, the guy from Poshepstein, and you say you grew up in Durban. Yeah. And then you guys have a Complicated. Smash Complicated mm. times. Remember how I dropped out of, high, of university, then I went back to school? By me going back to school, I didn't go back to music school. I went and studied HR, 
business ah, management. Okay. Uh, my standards. Am I right? I'm a leg to hop on. <laughs> I studied that in Port Shepston because my mom had gotten married and literally moved the entire family from Pine Town to Port Shepston. Oh. And that's how I got to know the Port Chifton kids. Because I went to school with them and I got to know them and they adopted me as one of their own. So even though I wasn't studying music, I feel like music followed me everywhere I went. Okay. Like I just couldn't outrun it. Like, I was like, you know what? I'm done with music. Music is hard. Mm. I can't even get my songs played on okay. radio. I get yeah. Ah, lol. Ubizo, ubizo. So it followed me and there was a music section. Gulea TVET College. It was Gamalake TVET College. FET back then, but now it's TVET. Wait, so FET is the old word for TVET, no matter? FET is the old word for TVET, yes. Is it? So, yeah. so everything is TVET now? No. Everything is TVET oh, now. Oh, I thought it was other way around, actually. Oh, shit, I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, AJ to be able to FET. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. TVET. But, yeah, La Poge, there was a violinist crazy black mm. violinist mm. in the middle of much of Jugin as a push of steam already in Jay God was playing with me at the time I'm just like how but why there's a music program I didn't know about it anyway long story short I, I make a song called loving you it was literally the first thing I got onto iTunes a song called loving you I think it's still there somewhere um, the, the album art, well, the single art is like a, a selfie that I took. Nice. <laughs> you start somewhere. Yes, you have to start somewhere. Yeah. And then I think Uti James Dix heard that song and he was just like, yo, hit me up. And I was like, who are you? <laughs> you know, is this via DMs on Insta or something? Yeah, what along along Tola through friends, you know? Mm. And I'm like, hey, well, who's that? Tell them. I don't know who they are. I don't I, like. Mm. I'm always that girl. Like mm. I want to see what yeah, you've yeah, done yeah. before I jump in. You know. Um, so after that, he DM'd me on Instagram. It's like, when you're ready, this is my number, mm. and and this is the song. Chase um So Umjix <laughs> sent me the song through um, Mr. Blue, who was the violinist slash pianist slash music teacher slash I don't know what other thing that he taught, but he taught a lot. He was very smart. Um, when finally Mr. Blue, Blue Notes, house people, um, played me the song, it was me now going around chasing after mm. Um Dix. Mm. I'm like, Oh, Um Dix. Oh, but Jim Dix. When I finally found him, Sahamba saw a recorder in Newlands. Yeah. Durban. The, Durban. Uh, East or West? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even remember uh, the name of the studio. It was so long ago. But I noticed that yeah, the producer behind the desk was somebody that I went to music school with. So mm-hmm. again, 360 people I went to school with. Now I'm trying, I'm, in, I'm reintegrated with them again. And it's crazy. Kamalak was pure jula. And it turns out he also like helped produce the song. Like we knew he was a beast. You know, when you're in university and people show you like, okay, so he's, he's the best he's at the top this. And, this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and he was one of the people of Abetsi. He's the best at Everything. Mm. It's like something you're doing. So I ever have a beast. Hey, what else? Piano. So I ever have a beast. Mm. Done. So I, when when he when he showed up and told me that, oh yeah, I produced that song. I wasn't even surprised. Um, I I think we we did that song until two in the morning. Mm. Then we dropped it. Nothing came of the song until later on that year. Yeah. So I was so sad. I'm like, not again. <laughs> Music, you're doing this to me again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the song didn't pop for like a good six months. But what are you telling your mom? I mean, because you're mentioning now that you had to go all the way to Newlands and you recorded the song until 2 a.m. I mean, as a parent, you, you must be worried. Uh, luckily, I still have family in Durban. Okay. So it was literally just a spin. Like, I'm going to show them So you lied. But you never... Well, yes. I had to. <laughs> the music. Yes, I had to. Yeah. So I, I spun that story and it kind of worked and then we recorded Mvulo. And yeah, Mvulo became a life changer. Mm. Yeah, I, I could safely say it started with Mvulo. Yeah. Yes, there were stepping stones to get me to those places, but Mvulo was, yes, yes. Yeah. Everything happened. Mvulo was Mvulo <laughs> <laughs> of a career. <laughs> yeah. Though it means Monday. 
And then I, 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 I'm pretty sure that um, most people expected more from you and your dicks. You know, mm. I mean, after such a successful song, mm. I wanted to see you guys performing together. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to see more of Zanda and, and DJs, you know, when, mm. you, when you both have a hit song. Mm. So you would, you would assume that when the DJ goes to perform, the vocalist is there, you want to see the live show. I mean, these are the two guys that put together this massive song. And it was towards December. Now, I'll sometimes go to gigs and Dix is, is, is booked to perform, but Dix is there by himself. And I'm like, where is the lady? Where's the vocalist? But then, isn't it like that even today? Think about it. Mm. Yeah, it's what we go through as vocalists. We, you know, we help make a song, and yes, yes. and then you get sidelined. sidelined. Mm. Ooh, easily. Just like, yeah. all right, thank you, and we go on. It sucks. Mm. I hope someday we'll be able to change that. Working on it. <laughs> is 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 that what makes it hard to stick to one one DJ or one producer? Because yeah. they like you, you make hits together, and then they sideline you at some mm. point. Is that why it's hard to stick to one person? Because mm. you've made hits with a couple of DJs. Yeah, yeah, I have. Um, yes, it's it's weird. Let's start with DJ M. Dix. DJ M. Dix, both of us were unknown. I'm guessing at the time he was trying to make his mark as much as he could, you know, as best as he knew how. Mm. But in the process, he didn't see that, yo. The one person who actually helped you get there is, you know, being mm -hmm. left behind. And, and we had a fallout. And I remember I vowed at that point, I was like, you're going to need a hit from me again. Mm. It's not going to happen. And yeah. did you said it to yourself? I said that to, to him. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can't now pretend to go to the you know? Like mm -hmm. I, I, at the time Vele Pela, because Nami I was as desperate to get into the game. Of course, yeah. I just felt like maybe he'd understand where I was coming from. Yeah. But he didn't. It was always just him and him and him mm -hmm. and him. And then when we finally got a chance to perform that song on TV. I was like, all right, good morning. My name is Zander, Zander, Zander. Let's go. And I performed okay. mm -hmm. like, yo, like I was crazy. I remember we were on Thursday Night Live with Marawa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that video's still up there somewhere. And I was just like, if I let this chance go, I'd be letting myself down. I will perform until my bones break if I have to. And it's crazy because it was that one performance that sparked everything else. Yeah. I was like, all right, let's we, go. We see you, but we want to. Yes, we, we, we see you, but, but now we can't book you without the girl. <laughs> <laughs> and now the girl is like, I'm done, bro. I'm out. On to bigger and better things. And then. Yeah. Yeah, man, we moved on. We had to move on. I remember at some point, though, me and Dix, we tried kind of like working it out. We even were going to do a group. And then I realized it was, eh, eh, in this here group. <laughs> <laughs> Something's going to go wrong. Baby or seven And it sucks in situations like that where you find a good to you. One member of the group is pulling their weight and the other is just like, oh, oh. we're cruising. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What's the mood like on the way going to Super Sports? Studios. Are you guys driving together or are you in different cars? Um, at the time, because Open Mic was looking to sign both of us, so what they did was like, let us show you what we can do with this song with, without you guys putting a signature on paper. Okay. And then we'll take it from there. All right. And then they just gave us like a crazy PR run from the mm -hmm. metros to this to that. Like we were performing at the metros after party. We did PR on TV. Like. Uh, <laughs> So we did live eyes. amp, yeah. yes. Um, it was a lot, and they, and they really pushed. I think they were they were really keen on signing the both of us, but I guess he had different ideas at the time. And I was just like, hmm, mm. I'm gone. <laughs> Bye, bro. Bye. I, whether it's good for me or not, and I, and looking back, like I think that's one of my biggest regrets that I put my desperation first mm. and got myself into a bit of trouble by yeah. signing on to that paper. But we'll move on. We'll, we'll talk about that another day. Um, so after that, that's when, you know, we got to be seen. And I don't want to lie. It, it was after I said all those things on some, if it wasn't for open mic, I don't think we'd both be where we are. 
like we, if it wasn't for these two grandpas believing in the song and believing that they could make us better artists, mm. I think you would have just thrown me under the bus and that would have been that, you know. The world would have had to forget about Zanda Zagosa. Can I just ask, like with what you're saying right now, you've always been talented, right? And you've been trying out this music since 2014, you said. Mm. Um, do you honestly feel like PR is what determines an artist more than their talent? Because you're saying that when they Definitely. came on Definitely. In this country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely. And it's, it's so sad that we're, we're those type of people who just eat mm. up what's on TV and we're convinced that's, that's, mm. that's the thing that we should be you know, going for. That's, that's what we should be putting our money on. Whereas there are so many other talented beings, even more than me or my generation. Like the kids are coming up. Yo, yes. yes. I just I recently listened to... A research project. Mm. I'm thinking this boy did all of this without even a drop of validation or PR from you know the big PR companies, yeah. and he's doing it, man, and it's pissing a lot of people off. It, and, it really is. And that's what happens. Like you find the talented ones are are going to be sidelined because now there's this new, sorry for lack of a better term, bubblegum artist who is in people's faces all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. and yeah. it becomes like a drug, like you're brainwashed. Yeah. True. It's like, baby, baby, baby. <laughs> yeah. But then now he's got his peaches up in Georgia. Now that's music now, yeah. you know what I mean? But I guess for some, uh, for some of the people, it takes the bubble gum to get to the peaches. So, hey, it's sad, it's so sad, but it's, it's, it's a PR vibe here in our country. It's so sad, but it is what it is. So I'm like Norway. We're like, okay, but you can't, can you play guitar? Yeah. Yeah, we can, you, can, you can sing, but like, what instrument do you play? Yeah. Can you at least track your own vocals? Mm. You know, it's, it's always just about the art more than anything. Well, I just feel like right now it's about, do you look good on pictures? Yes, how many followers how many do you ass have? You, I'm like, how much ass are you willing yeah, to show? To show. So if we put up a picture of you, how many likes can you get mm. in a matter of one hour? Mm. But same time, mm. I feel like not the guys look at the actor. I mean, when you look at artists now, I'm branching out, I'm branching out of Israel. Like, when you look at artists like oh, Britney Spears or or, or like mm. Jennifer Lopez, those people can't sing. Sure. They can't sing, but by the image. Yeah. yeah but, and then mm. take all the good Jennifer Lopez, which I feel was smart as move. Take a Latino girl so you can attract to locals Latin America mm. as well. And J Lo was the perfect person, showing from being a fly girl. In the show, hey, Wayne Brothers, he in Living Color, I think it was called. She was a fly girl, she was a dancer. Mm. And I'm told about it. We can use her to so infiltrate other market outside America. Let's now branch out to Latin America. So that's a perfect example. Now, I think she's okay. got some sort of talent. I mean, she's a great actress. And a great dancer. And a great dancer. Mm. Mm. You spoke about desperation. You said that you know your desperation has led you to you know sign on certain documents, yeah. not understanding what they are. I don't want us to get into that mm. in, per se. I don't want you to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, have you seen other artists? Because I know you've probably you've probably engaged with other artists mm. as well that are trying to you know come up. And have you seen other pe other people do things thinking that it's going to be their next you know? going to elevate their career yeah. Gandhi that's just going to be the end of them yeah unfortunately because what people don't understand is that sometimes they'll they'll get you into like example a 360 contract and it's not because they want more projects from you they're just trying to push whatever song you came up like whatever hit you had at the time so for example let's just say Umvulo was my only hit yeah and I signed because I'm thinking after Umvulo I'm going to make more hits. Yeah. Whereas they just wanted to push Umvulo and there was never going to be a head to toes, a Hamba, mm -hmm. you know, a Kailam album. You know, there was no plan. They just wanted to catch, you know, ride the wave of Umvulo. Yeah. And a lot of artists, they end up being called one hit wonders. But we one hit wonder is still stuck in a contract. Mm -hmm. You were quick to sign. Mm -hmm. And these people don't want to let you go from your contract. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're not trying to let you work. It's frustrating. That's very true. It is frustrating. So, yeah. But what's the best thing to do in that predicament? I mean, you have a song that is doing amazing. You are easily to it. Mm. And someone comes to you because, unfortunately, in SA, if you have a song that is on high rotation, mm. it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to make 
money, money. on that song, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's different than, than uh, compared to other countries. Mm. So you get um, a big company coming to you and say, you say come through, mm. we are obviously going to uh, make sure that you get your coins of the song, but you just need to sign this contract. Yeah. What do you do in, in that situation? As an artist who just wants to get in, and mind you, the person that is coming to you and saying, "Say, come through," is someone that you know is fucking shit up. <laughs> yeah, ne? Like that person is probably a team. He baits your. You your know. Queen. <laughs> you know. Uh, he you've, your seen, queen. you've seen that. Mm. He drives the merc. Like drives the merc. He must have been afraid. So when Zang, when say ah, what's the best thing to do in that situation? It doesn't really read reading your contract and seeing if something works for you or not, and also just being honest with yourself. We are zazi if you if you're lucky, and in clear English, I'm like guys, no man got one. So if you know you're good at what you're doing, you probably, chances are you're going to be able to do it again, you know. But hey, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Because I can't say stop needing what they have to offer. What they have to offer is exactly what you need. Hey, it's, it's really, it's really hectic. Because I get you. Because I'm about to talk about the budget. I'm It's all still signed. Oh, you I'm telling you, like when I spoke to people, I don't mention names, like in 2016, they were still saying, yeah, some bamboo will kill them. No, so, not you wanting, like, I don't want to mention name and uh. then. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying, okay, No, guys, come on. In the big it's given. So, Jay. So, Jay, it's given. So, Jay, it's given. So, it's given. And it's really sad. But anyway, moving along, I, I heard you speak about the home takes, and it's quite depressing. I mean, I personally want to know what's okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's quite depressing. I won't lie. So, I mean, I want to know what's okay. Ulo Kuzo, Prince KP. How did uh, that come about? Uh, Umvulo, again, like I mm. said, Umvulo was that song. Mm. It opened every door. Mm. So what Ooh, Prince KB, did he find you or? Um, he found the song, the song led him to me. Cause oh, okay. you know what it is with DJs. They, oh. they don't really care about who produced that song. Mm. They're trying to see what can I get from this vocalist on mm. maybe my own production. And that's how Young Kinder came about. He hits me up. And this is before I signed a contract, mind you, with Open Mic. They were still trying to trying yeah. stuff out, oh. you know? So I was, I was still a free agent at the time. Okay. And he hits me up. He's like, yo, please check your DM. And I think he posted that on one of my pictures on Instagram. Instagram were you, were you was still excited? new back then. We were still excited uh, about yeah. that. You know that orange filter uh, that uh. had... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, what the... I have made it. <laughs> <laughs> yo, we're trying to take likes. And like, like hey. a <laughs> Yeah, yo, and I. That's why I'm just like, I, I asked my friend. I'm like, is this real? What's a friend? Go to your DM. And one beggar, he's got like his number there. And he's mm. like, please call me. Um, I think you're amazing and we need to work. I'm like, I know, Joe's is working overtime today. Let's do it. <laughs> and yeah, um, flew up to Joburg. We recorded Young King. I need to find that he's actually the coolest dude ever, you know. He looks like he's cool. Actually. He actually is very cool. Um, you know, he, he, you know when a person's got a plan and they know where they want to go. And, you know, they've got everything planned out. Like, okay, from this, we're going to do that and this, and the single's going to do this. Like, charts and plans. And like, this is new. <laughs> this is new to me. I'm learning a shitload, you know? So that was nice. Um, mm. We recorded Yonki and Do, and obviously, given that he was, you know, poster boy for music at the time. Of course. Uh. And... There was that car, his very first car. Hey, not the A series. Kotanje, I lay, I lay, like tea, laying at a family car. Okay. I thought I fuck up my remark gold, and I'm just like, no, what's like, too much. Imagine. bro. Gold, bro. Uh, that man, like, that man has always been. And then I fucking stomp his sack on the door and fucking mm. Prince KB. <laughs> it was funny. No, it's not so too good. Prince KB. For me, it was uh, when he was driving around SA and allowed everyone to sign on his yeah. car. I wonder. Okay, that, that, that was concept. cool. Yeah, that I don't want to lie. That, that, that yeah. was that, that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's cool when you be in it. Yeah. <laughs> so but then, gets. like, when it when it was done, it looked mm. like it was doodling. It was mm. really nice. It was really cool. Yeah, so that was nice. the second. Uh, I don't know. Wait, the very first one. Uh, I think so. Mm. I think it's somewhere in the free state. Oh, okay. 
um, yeah, so he he opened my eyes to a different a different world altogether, mm. and I was just like, so this is what the music industry looks like. Mm. All right, good morning. Mm. Now I know what to demand wherever I'm going. I'm sure, like you get towels on stage, and yeah. you know, six bottles of six bottles I was at this gig, and Prince KB was performing at this gig actually. I was an MC, and I was supposed to introduce him before I leave for Newcastle. Mm. But I think Nafa was on a girl stage, mm. and on the booth, ne, kune, kune, kune no tibali, kuti, please don't play clap controller. Mm. Okay. Because Prince came was performing at the same game. Yes. So I'm like, that song at that time was pumping. Yeah. Mm. This, that's a song that everybody wants to hear when they go out. Mm. But there was a note that said, don't play club controller. Make sure to go to don't you dare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, like, yes, yes. Yeah, that you're no, guessing this is it. it. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, you club controller. So you've never had like a situation where, because I mean, we, we hear stories about about Ms. Fazani getting into the industry. Sometimes they they are forced, they are compromised. compromised mm. So when I, you've never had that situation, oh. because I remember there was a rumor flying around the Uti, I might also have been no, been no dicks. Uh, they were doing something that didn't work out, hence the whole thing. Yeah. Vela Pela Guzo Banjalo, yeah. when people are trying to hide what's actually going on. I remember at the time, and I'm going to say this because Fia Foko and Gumba Lul. Anyway, <laughs> I remember at the time it had gone out. So, April Mindy Davo Guzo Umdix didn't produce Umvolo. They're trying to patch it up. And obviously we had a fallout because he was treating me the way he treated me. Mm. And you know when you get advice from people who, I, I guess, don't know better, they'll try and do all those things. And I remember, I'm like, got them dicks, you let this fly. And this is what I always tell people. I'm like, whenever there's a rumor, because there's, the power of squashing the rumor will never come from a female. But when, as a man, that never happened. So, okay, sure. They literally accept. And I'm just like, every time a, a stupid rumor comes up, it's your responsibility to, to squash it, especially my Wuti. You know it's not true. So, at the time, it got put in the Oh my guy, I was a And I mean, I wasn't going to know. I wasn't raised that way. You know what I mean? And also, <laughs> I wasn't told the man was okay, sure, I'm going to record the or stand on disclosure, I'm going to fast the watch. Because sometimes people do that. Oh, like, really? Yeah. yeah. Like DJs who can't produce and like you come into this. And there's a lot of them, by the way. There's a lot there's of them. There's a <laughs> shitload. There's a shitload. Oh gosh, you'd be surprised. Even yeah. people you think yeah, can depends. produce. <laughs> Turns out now, nah, well, you know what I mean? Mm. And then, and gone. <laughs> and gone. Uh, it's really the most sad thing I've ever seen. Mm. Oh, is it the saddest the word? Yeah. Saddest thing I've ever seen. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really yeah, so at the time, I think there was a bit of conflict. When promo is done, you and I are going our separate ways. Mm. So I guess to keep the hype going, and people are asking, so who's this girl? But I, I, was, I was very quick to nip that at the bud. If anybody tries anything with me, I'll expose that on the spot. Because at the time, Bela, I had nothing, so I had nothing to lose. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm. So, and, and I had already established it was who are in my corner and who are trying to mess me up. So, if you come there trying to do funny things instantly, because I, like I had a, at the time, I probably had like interviews almost every weekend. Mm. So, I'll call out what you did on Monday As well. on a national platform. Do you think, because I'm listening to you speaking right now, do you think maybe you growing up as a tomboy? Mm. Yes, I feel like that also helped me. It helped me a lot because in the stepping, he only says, and break his hand. You know, like I, even mm. my facial expression is just like, I'll never entertain those times. You know how Hans sometimes, and I don't blame Hans for doing this. I heard the good say it's because mainly they're like literally uncomfortable in that situation. They're like, they'll laugh it off or whatever. Me, I will punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that on that. Uh. 
you know. Some girls don't even have, you know, the power to do that because they're afraid. Mm. Uh, if, we, if you return that punch, it's fine. I'll catch mm. my blue eye, but I'll come back with another one. You know sure. what I mean? Mm. You catch an L, you move on. But it, 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 as long as you miss it, you figure it with, okay, no. Maybe it's not a good idea to mess with that one. So, mm. yeah, we, girls are put in compromising positions all the time in the game. Oh, true. And honestly, I always say this. I know sometimes probably people are like, but like, you don't understand. I do. What you allow continues. Mm. They'll block you for the time being. It's going to be frustrating. But mm. nothing stays blocked forever. That's true. I, mean, I, I want to I I find out now, like, you know, you knew in the game, yeah, but, and now I want to dig deep. You know, you know how the music, music industry is yeah, but outside now the music, you know, um, you know, there's drugs, alcohol, late nights, all the pressure and like, mm -hmm. okay, in the music business so far, like how 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 are you handling that? Like how are you maneuvering around that? Um I was lucky, like me and I in life, I don't know, maybe I was lucky to have examples of these things. Mm -hmm. So I had a cousin of mine who was an addict. So I knew what you know, drugs could do to you. Another one who was just addicted to the nightlife and wasting his life away. So I knew what that mm. could do to you. So what you ha what you do is try not be like those people. Mm. And then I remember at some point, I think we were going to perform. Where is MT from again? Matadia. Matadia. Uh... And I had somebody offer me drugs. I'm like, ah, it's cold. It was so cold. Like, yeah, you, so that you can have energy. Mm. And I'm just like, but I'm good. I've got natural energy. I'm a chimpani at the time. You know, <laughs> I'm looking like, like Vegeta. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So I had, I had all the energy I needed. A good four to five hours. I'll have mm. in, enough energy to take me through for like the next two days. Sure. And they offered me drugs. And like, they, they were shook at me just saying, I don't do that stuff. Just give me three shots of tequila. I'm good. good. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Nakona foot, nakona, just to keep warm. Because, wow, minus something degrees, and she has the stage, she's keen, like, you're fine, you're yeah. fine over there. Yeah, yeah, stage, you know? Yeah. You gotta look like an <laughs> artist. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's hard. So, every time, and because I grew up the way I grew up, I've never really felt pressure to fit in. Mm. I've been weird all my life. Mm. And it's worked for you. It's so you've never for felt me. the pressure mm. to fit in. So every time I tell, yeah, I'm like, I was about to ask oh, that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Mm. And, mm. and that's that. On that. Yo. What's the one, Zima? So. Hey, Jay, I'm so tall. I'm going to I'm going to And it's so sad because um, a lot of people that I started off with you know, fell into those traps and I suppose it was by giving them time. Yeah. You know? mm. Tell so us sad. about tell us about um the first big check. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I mean know. chilling at home, next thing your phone goes off and you look at Uncle Sam is like, like Yay mm. Yay Tell him Uncle Sam because of all the radio spins. Mm. Uncle Sam is Samro, by the way. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Uncle, Uncle Sam pops up regularly, like all the time. Um, some Could months you stay making those and sometimes they accumulate your stuff and then they drop it in like one month, like randomly, and oh, like right. bam. And then sometimes they will misspell your name so that your funds get redirected. Actually, everybody out there, yeah. go to Samro, check if your stuff is correct. Yeah. Check. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. So. It's crazy. I'm not trying to blow whistles or whatever, but hey, if it's not your money and didn't work for it, you know it's not yours. Stop yeah. it. Um, Alexander, if Samro was to, Uncle Sam was to hit you up with the wrong, would you not take it? With the wrong what? With the wrong. You said sometimes they misspell no, your name they, so they, they can they redirect misspell, the phone. Every time a, a, a name is misspelled, it doesn't. It goes back to to them, Uncle Sam. Mm, um, okay. So it's unaccounted for. Mm. Oh, okay, I thought you said yeah. maybe like it goes into the wrong people. Yeah. So in Deganjalo. So, <laughs> yeah, um, um, so it was Uncle Sam and then the gig money. Mm. We had a thing at Open Mic where you get paid monthly. Mm. Like they accumulate your gigs for the, for the month and then mm. BAM on the 30th. Mm. <laughs> Whew, my, my heart stopped. But then I don't know. I don't know what happened to that money. I had to give it to my mom. Uh, yeah. That's really dope. So yeah, now I just want to get away from music now. Now I want to talk about those and those mm. outside music now. What does a regular day, Yazan and look like? 
I think I wake up at like 12, so I, I lose like half the day already. Mm. <laughs> um, yo, I don't do much, hey? Mm. I feel like my personal life is my work life. Mm-hmm. It's not like where I can, you know, get up as John and then sure. yeah. and then yeah. no, no, like I am my life. Like mm. I am my li- my what I do for a living. Mm. Um, if you're sleeping, your mind is also sleeping. Unfortunately, yeah. Mm. So yeah, I gotta wake up every day and hustle. I try the gym thing, hey, but since lockdown. Uh, jump in. Yeah, no. Mm. I'd rather eat donuts and snowballs and <laughs> milk and watch Ooh. Netflix. And still have a body like that? It must be nice. Yeah. Genetics. Shout out to my mom. My mom <laughs> is a bad, bad. Must you know, be really bad. Nice. For doing these things. Yeah, mm. but uh, uh, it's, my life is really boring. And, mm. and I feel like everybody who gets to know me eventually finds that out. So that's. Mm. Uh, yes. It looks better on Instagram. Uzan, Uzan, is she single? No, I'm not single, guys. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm I'm good. I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm good. 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 I'm Man, man, you stress go put go and you play your book, you entertainment and you know, you try it. Do you go with them to gigs? I haven't been gigging. So you guys met? I haven't really opened my bookings. Okay. And oh. Initially, it was for a fear of lockdown and this mm. and that. Because my mom, oh. oh, sorry, of Corona. Because my mom caught Corona. Oh. And that was hectic. Mm. I was just like, I'm not leaving this house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. And then recently, yeah, obviously, the piano wave caught me. Yo. Mm. I've been at Groove a lot. A lot, mate. And then only now my bookings are open. Hopefully, if things work out from Easter onwards, mm. we, we're back at work. But yeah, because I'm going to get a machine. Okay. No, no, no more record. It's a record. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, I've had a recording air corn. Uh, yeah. I mm. recorded something for DJ Dira, mm. I think a few, like a month ago, and okay. he was there. Yeah. Mm. So, Zander, since you said you're in a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. I just want to ask you, is consent like a whole umbrella type of consent that covers your entire relationship? Because let's say, for, for instance, you're out, it's a night out, you have your boyfriend there, and you get home, and maybe at 2 a.m., he decides, it's feeling a little frisky, you're passed out, Nyana, and he decides to feel up on you, slide it in. Is that wrong? Is that right? It's your boyfriend. I won't do me, yes, but I still need to say yes or no. Like, especially if I'm passed out. Those are rapey vibes, guys. <laughs> rapey, rapey vibes. Because, one, if you wake up and you feel violated, that's a different story it altogether. Is, yeah. And it's just, you guys don't have serious trust issues. So, rather, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I could see that, man. Oh, babe, I know. Okay, can, Don't can, do it. Can I ask quick now? Now, plot twist. So far, I manage and Ulel. I've got the same thing about pressure, pressure. I think like, at that time, you were you so bad, you were 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 so bad, you you were so bad, you were so bad, you were so bad, you were so and then make Vumela then. Uh, now, uh, so actually. one more thing. Now, going back to that as well. Yeah. I call it when you to put it as couples, you're trying to bust spontaneous. And it's, mm-hmm. So it's 4 a.m. And they no? Not when I'm drunk. No, 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 no. You're talking when you're sober, sober now. You're sober, Pele. I'm going, you're still sober. According to who, though? Oh, so, okay. No, 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 she's, no she's, she's, she's sober. Okay, she's sober. 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 Well, you can be spontaneous. Got that thing or do you consent? Do you consent? Like, Nathine, if somebody kisses you and you kiss them back and... Oh, okay, I get you. Okay, okay. You know, you Fair enough. You're all oh. in it. But oh, then, like, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, you have a point. It's longer goes. longer goes. So, see, I spent it. 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 Oh. Uh, yeah, no, I couldn't help but um, you mentioned what Uma moved everyone from mm. Umlaz to Pushevstin when he got married, when she got married, mm. and I sort of picked up. I, I, I don't. I may be wrong. Did she marry your dad or? 
No. Okay. <laughs> um, she married somebody else, and the whole move, I think, was just her trying to keep. Sorry, mom. A happy family. But um, truth be told, I feel like I was too grown to be moved, so oh. I kept going back to oh, Dad. Um, my dad passed away when I was in grade eight. I'm mm. something. I'm somebody Britain would. Mm. And yo, rough times, yeah. because one, I didn't know the guy much. Um, even when he was still alive, and then and it was just so frustrating for me because I went into I went into my mom and I think I think I I translated it from what it is in the African community to what I knew, like to mourn someone. Like why would I mourn somebody I didn't know? Like and I'm just thinking to myself, you in danger, you know. It was a really, it was a really tough time for me, and also school kids are shit. Mm. You come through, I'm gonna love you. Actually, that was. Ah, oh, bro, mm. the worst. You're very, you're very. When that happens, but I guess it's a lot of your school like, mm. Why was that? Like it wasn't bad looking. Initially, it wasn't. Oh. Um, but now we worked. We worked on it. It's always like that, though. I mean, I've been. I was in denial. Mm. Possibly. Okay. I mean, it had been me and my mom for like what, close to twenty oh, years. Oh yeah, I'm so fearful of to manage you, says well. Tell me, where do you come from? I never am trying to tell you. You just don't give me. Yeah, it's. You know, it was really. It was. It was a weird time in my life, but we had to adjust. If not for us, then for Uma, yeah. because she was trying, you know, her bit at the to please all sides, you know. So we had to be, we had to be nice about it. But yeah, for for the most part, we ended up moving back to Durban and just living on our own. And then she carried on in Port Jefferson. Okay. Yeah. You know. Now let's talk about Zanda Zaguza and Open Mic. I see you there with Master KG. Shout out to Master KG, by the way, doing the most. Master. Yeah. Say, recently found out that guy doesn't even drink, by the way. Hey. He doesn't. Um, <laughs> Master KG, I see with my cats sometimes in the studio. Like, call and I want to be a mix. In the mix. Yeah, I'm about to be a mix. You are there. Uh, She's even with the Pretoria boys. Like, everything, everything, everyone. What's the name? Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> It's crazy, the open mic thing, because, oh, I got so much backlash, so why don't you want to sign in Durban? Why don't you want to work with people in Durban? And I'm just like, again, I'm very observant. Mm. I see what's happening. I study patterns. If it's not working, you can't lie to me and tell me that it is. It ain't. So I, I went somewhere where people were passionate about what I was trying to do. You know, like people are crazy enough to believe in your dreams, even when you don't know what your dream is. That's mm. what open mic was to me. So, so what do you want? I'm just like, I'm not sure yet. But when I figure it out, I'm going to need y'all to be there. They're like, okay, sure. And luckily when I did figure it out, they were there, man, ready to feel whatever mm. I, I was trying to put out. You know, and that, I remember Humble was so different to Mvulo. I lost a few fans. Like, mm. why did you stop singing? I'm just like, yeah, Nina. Mm. Yeah, Nina. <laughs> but they were there, man. Feuding the girl. Um, so, hey, open mic. It's safe to say that I'm one of the very first females to sign to open mic. Is Master KG signed with open mic or does it own open mic? Signed with open oh, mic. Oh, okay. Um, so I got to see everybody come up it's because I was one of the very first people there. So Master KG's journey is a very inspiring one from mm. who he was and what he is today. Hey, people need not search for inspiration elsewhere. So the oh, open mic is a regular label? Mm. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, you see them a lot on Twitter, hey? Twitter gods. No, I mean, no, actually, I'm not going to open mic. So I'm also going to open mic. What are you talking about? Could you open, open mic show? I don't know. Then okay, right now, do okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I need to change my TL. Mm. Yeah, so we're in there, man. Master KG's story, Makazi's story, similar. 
you know, where they went from, you know, Abantu who were really trying to exploit them and then, you know, had the same set of people believe in them and then look at where they are now. Mm. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. And I like how they didn't lie to you. They tell you that we're going to take you from grassroots level to wherever you want to be. That's literally their, their motto, yeah. you know. Mm. Growing artists from grassroots level. So I guess Puma Kona, so I see him bandy, and we grew into something amazing. And it, it literally takes just that somebody to believe in you. Okay, fine. And you have to believe in yourself. But yeah, it, mm. it's crazy, man. Sometimes I wake up and just like, exit. I've got Master KG on the speed dial. Mundoisha, Ophish, you know, Vin Diesel. It was nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and you know, him walking into my life was a blessing more than anything. Because I don't think I would have done as much work as I did had it not been for Skeleton Move. Yeah, you want a club controller. Yeah. That cemented me in SA. It's okay. Yeah. We we'll see you. Mm. We'll see you go with the yeah. big hair and the nice legs. I actually hate that. People know me for my legs more than my music. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that, that did SA. But Skeleton Move did crazy stuff globally. And I am forever grateful for that, for that song, man. Mm. Yay. Yeah. And when I spoke to you in December, you said you're going to do a bit of theatre this year. Mm. What, what's, what's, what's happening with that? I forgot in Dubai, theatre has crazy rehearsal hours. So every time I try to do theatre, they're doing the rehearsal thing. I get a phone call. Hey, you need to fly up to Jobe. <laughs> I think it happened like three times in a row and they were like, we can't do this because... Yes, possibly. You're a lead. First and foremost, <laughs> oh, you've got to read I, love. Mm. I can't I can't say now what it is because I've got Kali. They haven't. Oh, okay. They wanted to be a big surprise. Oh. But yeah, I really I really wish the best for them and and I hope my understudy is doing a great job. Shout so out. no more of that? Not no more of that for, for now. now. Yeah, okay. until I figure it out. Until I figure out how I can do and juggle both. You know, it's crazy. Mm. Yeah, I have an album out. My, my main mistake was to release an album and then think I could go to theatre. So now people are demanding more of what Kaya Lam, Kaya Lam has to offer. Yeah. And then and for now, I'd like to do the whole theatre yeah. thing, which is mm. also time consuming. So How's the album doing? Surprisingly well for a lockdown album. Mm. <laughs> yes. Because uh, lockdown obviously means less PR, no mm. shows. and yeah. yeah. Surprisingly well. People actually love Kaya Lam. In danger, I don't see. Sorry, sorry for calling it Kaya Lam. I got to see Angela Way Palanga and I think about Kaya Lami. When I was to Kaya Lam, so I was like, oh, Kaya Lam. I like it. <laughs> you know, for Kaya Lam. And, and yeah, yeah, they, they, they really, they really like him that song, which kind of tells me, let's see, you guys pretend to be heathens, but you're not. So yeah. it's cool. Um, yeah, Kaya Lam, Kaya Lam is doing well. A lot of people are. Picking their favorites. I think the next yeah. favorite is I Believe Now. I dropped that recently. And the video's coming out on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. Oh, you're like, no, I want you to be the lead. Same video. <laughs> is, it, is it the same song? No, it's not oh, the same song. It's a different okay. song. It's a song that I did with Usinom Sola from L World. Yeah. Um, it's called Ndim Shane. Amazing artist. Yes. Mm. Oh, God. Yes, vocals. Instrumentals, he's just there. If any, Ooh, he's a great songwriter. Um, yeah, so the song called Ndim Play. And yeah, man, people must be beautiful in their own ways. Man. You want you want to have him do when a song called Why Ndim not? Why not? Yeah, I'm a leading guy, La Payana. I'm a leading guy, La Payana. I'm a leading guy, La Payana. I'm a leading guy, La I'm trying this whole thing, like even in my in my previous video for Awiazwe Funai, I called up a friend of mine from high school, Keith. Like, dog, you're not you're not bad looking. Be in my video, you know. Can you always always the same people in the videos? Can we see like real faces? Yeah. And I'm trying to do that. Like, it's not always yellow bones with high top fades. I'm no, eye that's candy. True. Yeah. So it's, mm. We're grown. Yeah, we like a different kind mm. of. You know what and, I mean? And, and, realistic. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, and consider, cause about their shot, it's okay. At the end of the day. If, if if people find out what's okay, Kono is we 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 music video. We want to go mm. see the video because of who he is. Yeah. So I can't understand what you, where, where you're coming from. Yeah. Mm. Real people, real stories. Mm. Yeah. So you're gonna give him do another chance to be in one of your music Some videos? Someone, he want young charge. No, he came to and he's like, hey, no, let's talk. How no, he was like, oh, he's like, oh, 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 he can't afford me. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no, no. That's my manager. I was like, okay, no, cool. 
<laughs> you take care of us. It's all your manager is doing good yeah, stuff. Well, your plan, yeah. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> I think we're about to wrap up, but before we wrap up, Zander, um, what's the one thing that people see you as, or people say about you, things that you've heard on the streets about you that people say, or how people perceive you, that you really, really, really can't stand, and you just want to clear that one thing out? Guys, like how you said now, Guti, stop seeing me from her legs because I don't I like that. that. I don't like it. Uh. Well, okay, fine. Now I'm trying to be the face of Groove, but people think I groove every weekend. My life is so boring. There's nothing yeah. wrong with grooving every weekend. Eh? <laughs> I mean, especially yeah. if you can afford it. Exactly. So, uh, so it's cool. But yeah, hey, I wouldn't say con detaini apart from, you know, the usual chitty chatter that I don't care about. Yeah. I mean, Hashem, I'm very passive aggressive. I won't get into stuff. It would bother me for like a short second and then we move on. And that's it. I feel like my life is happier that way. Fine, people will talk and this and that. Oh, wait, there is something I want to clear. Ooh, this is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it just. Yes. Yeah, it came through from the back of my head. The she was. Didn't whistle, I can't whistle like that. <laughs> I, that one was the one that I could do. <laughs> um, there was a tweet that I, I, okay, fine. It was, it was right in the middle of the Andilin Lua scandal, and I'm thinking to myself, at the time, a cousin of mine had just come out. Came out, told the family, called up the family, and was saying like, "Hey guys." So, I think I like guys. <laughs> and we're like, oh, okay, that's cool, because obviously we've known for like ever. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just that he's not, you know, colorful about it. He's still like your, your random straight guy, you know? And that's how he prefers it to be. And when he finally broke it down to me, because I'm thinking, it's cool that you told the family and everything, but you don't seem too okay. What's going on? He goes to me and he's like, Hey, bruh, so I've been doing this whole group thing with, you know, fellow LG LGBT community fellows, and I'm just like, I feel like they're not accepting me for who I am. They expect me to stop hanging around with my straight friends. I'm a straight friends like who are actually cool with him being into guys. Um, and they, they feel like I'm too tomboyish for their idea of gay. And I'm thinking oh. to myself, is it really... <laughs> Is it really a thing where now you have to be gay a certain way for you to be considered gay? Mm. And that really pissed me off. I'm f I feel like even on a, on, a, on a normal day, I wouldn't have taken it as personally, but that's my blood. Mm. And come through different for blood. And you guys know, hey? So I, I tweeted, I'm just like, it's weird because, you know, for a nation that's so desperate to be you know, accepted, they don't want to accept themselves or like one of their own. Yup, it blew up. <laughs> it blew up. Like, it was more insults than anything. But nobody was countering what I was saying. So I, I'm just left wondering, let's see, is it because you know what sometimes it happens like that? Oh, and there's also a friend of mine who's transgender, who's been getting the worst end of it. Mm -hmm. The worst end of it. And it's funny because it comes more from people that he didn't expect would be like that to him, to her now. Sorry, apologies. So, I don't know, man. It, it was just a really hot space to be in, and I'm just thinking to myself, fine, got canceled, people started insulting me, this and this, that and that. And then when I consulted my friends, and I'm like, okay, guys, Nina, I've known you from primary school, yeah. you know. Nyangazu kuti, I'm not a homophobe. They even called me. I don't, I don't know what the new term is now, but Bona, because we're old. They call me a fag hag. <laughs> they call me a fag hag because mm. obviously house mother, house mother, mother dragon, mm. mother dragon, drag house of dragon is not just you know dancers doing whatever. It's more like a performance sanctuary, and whoever needs help comes through, and mm. that's what I, I was I launched sometime last year, and yeah, man. So when that happened, I just realized, was, hey, guys, we still have a long way to go. Fine, it's more about education and everything. And fine, I might have offended a lot of people. I think somebody even went to a different podcast and had their way with yeah. my name. And that's okay. I, I'm not one to say they have no business feeling like this. Like, I can't pinch you and then you tell me it's so and I tell what you, no, it's not what so. What did the tweet say? Uh, that's what I. That's what it said for people who are so desperate to be accepted. 
it's it's hard that she, it's hard for me to believe that you find it hard to accept one of your own because that's what that's what it came across as after what my family my family member told me mm. you know because i'm thinking this should have been the easiest transition of his life especially because people around him already knew like as much as you can try and hide it it's We've who you are seeing you, yeah. you know it's who you are so it, it, it's 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 not hard to well, for people who are close to you to see i just I, di I didn't get it. So in my head, I'm thinking, so you have to be gay a certain way for you to be, you know, accepted into the community. Is that how it is? Or maybe am I crazy? Or And, yo, they had a field day. Like, I think I had, like, a week of just people going at me. It was crazy. And then, obviously, the label deleted the tweets because they considered it bad publicity. Oh, yeah, I'm signed. I didn't delete that tweet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, say what I, I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. I've always been that girl. And I remember a friend of mine was like, well, truth be told, you, you guys know I've been gay. And it hasn't been easy for me because he's big. Like, he's, one, he's tall, and, you know, mm. he's what most straight people would consider, I will, you're too big to be gay. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. like you're a manly man. You're like, a manly man. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. So that kind of thing usually comes from straight people, and I get it because there's still a long way to go there, you know, in terms of educating people on what their life is about and how is and how they, they go about living it. But for it to come from, you know, other gay people, it's just it's mind baffling for me. Mm. So that's what I tweeted, and yo, I got the worst end of the stake. And, I even had somebody reduce my entire career. Skeleton move included to just one song. That broke me. Mm. It's so weird that she mentions this because remember outside I was going on about my lesbian friend mm. and how she's the butch lesbian. She's yeah. the manly lesbian in the relationship. But she always reminds me, we'll see, at the end of the day, I'm still a girl. And she's very affectionate. Yes. When you part ways, she's like, I love you, friend. I'm like, I love you too. You know, it's just one mm. of those things. Not because she's, she sees me as her potential person, but because mm. genuinely as humans, mm. we just get each other on that level. And she always goes on to say, we'll see, it's weird how people assume that I'll be comfortable chilling in a group full of men for hours on end. And she's like, I don't like that. I'm a girl at the end exactly. of the day. So and in a room full of a Miss Lisa. You know, so it's really it's really weird how people want to tell you how to be gay or how to be lesbian. At the end of the day, you're just a human being and you just want to be you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought it was about. So yeah. when I when I called that out, yikes. They came for me. But I you guess hey fetched. I was fetched. <laughs> so I hear you in was a a <laughs> racial. They fetched me and I accept it, you know? Yeah. And to those who are offended, I apologize. It wasn't my intention to offend you guys and I can't tell you how to feel. You know, if you feel like that, cut deep, then it cut deep. I can't tell you, ah, it's a minor cut, stop it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it is what it is, but to the, I'm sorry that it hurt, but I'm not sorry for standing up to it. Yeah. Understand. And that's all. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for having me. Such a dope conversation. Really, really wild. Thank you very much. The Eternal Podcast, third episode. Do make sure to check out the first two. But from us, it's a wrap. It's a wrap.